Good afternoon, everybody. We're very happy to see so many people in the last session. Um, we're glad that you're here and instead of drinking a beer. Um, I don't need to introduce uh, Sasha. Welcome. I don't need to introduce Sasha. He's a heavy-duty developer and really an important part of the Drupal 8 cycle. And I think you should all pay him a beer tonight because otherwise there wouldn't be a Drupal to be used by you. Now, I am not a core developer. I'm a part-time developer, and I'm an old man as well. But Sasha and I did a deal almost two years ago where um, I agreed to write the documentation on the entity system for Drupal 8 if he taught me things about the entities. We did this, and the result you're going to see today. One thing, it's probably easy to assume that I'm the oldest person in this room, so if I can learn it, you can all learn it as well. You're old? How old are you? Okay, he's older. So you're the only one, <laughs> the only one excused. Okay, what are we going to talk today about today? Um, there are two types of uh, in entities in Drupal 8, config and content entities. The content thing is blue here because all the exceptions are going to be in blue. All the things that only apply to content are going to be in blue. Secondly, minimalistic approach. What is the minimum stuff you need to do in order to use content, content entities for data manipulation, Drupal 8? How to install and use entities, um, making them really useful above just manipulation of data in Drupal. And how to use views to present your data in there. Last but not least, overviews and tools, because it is a relatively complex system and there's a lot to know and understand about it. Before we start, I mean, that applies almost to everything in Drupal 8, but uh, working with entities, developing entities, schemas, annotations, everything is heavily cached. So whatever you do, whenever you change something, use Drush. Cache rebuild, because otherwise your system is not going to work. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so as Christoph mentioned, there are two types of entities in Drupal 8. There are content entities and config entities. And they both share the same basic system. They're both same basic APIs. But the way they are stored and they work is quite different. So on one side, you have config entities. They build on top of the configuration system in Drupal 8, which means that they can be exported. You can provide default configuration in your module. There's a dependency system, so that different configs knows what it needs to be installed. So you have a node type and you have fields for it. Then Drupal knows that it has to create the, field, the node type first before it can create the fields for it. And um, if you want to translate them, then use the config translation module. And one important thing is that config entities don't scale well. They are all stored in a single table. They're all exported and imported into the same folder. So if you're going to have hundreds of those, then you might run into problems. Um, on the other side, you have content entities. They're stored by default in the database tables. That's configurable and overridable. You can use MongoDB or something else. But by default, in Drupal code, they're stored in the database in different tables. Um, they can have configurable fields that you can add in the user interface, like you know it from Drupal 7. They um, can have revisions. There's default views integration for it, so um, that it's very easy to provide views for your custom entity types. Um, if you want to translate those, they need the content translation module. And unlike config, they're scalable, so you can have thousands and hundreds of thousands of Config content entities, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, examples for config entity types are no types, the, um, also vocabulary, the views, filter formats, basically anything that you can configure and set up in Drupal are config entities. And content entities are notes, comments, terms, users, files, um, also menu links that you create in the user interface, 
um, and quite a few more. As Sasha mentioned, in Drupal 7, entities were introduced as the basic data mechanism um, for Drupal. Huh? Together with the data abstra database abstraction layer, ever since Drupal 7, we never had to touch the database directly anymore. And this has been massively extended. If we look at what we need as a minimum, absolute bare minimum, to use the entity, it's number one, the definition of an entity type. And this is really reduced to the minimum. Please note here that this definition is in a very strange place. It is in the annotation section of the entity file. So what you see here would be the class definition, which we'll look at later on. That's why you have all these dot stars and etc. in front of it. Uh, no. <laughs> is anybody here that is, is it possible to make it bigger at the beamer? No, I'm afraid not. I'm sorry. They will be, I, I assume. We'll post them online. Go and check. You see? All these guys. Pff. Okay. The bare minimum of definition you need to define your own quantity type is a quantity ID. And that's basically the name of the quantity. The convention here is to have a module name underscore the name of your, cont of your entity. A label is a, user, a very useful thing because otherwise you'll never find it. You need to define what kind of base table, the one table where all the content of the entity the standard content of the entity without the fields will go. That's contact in our case. And you need to define the entity keys, basically the index that is being used on the database to make sure that um, accessibility is given of the entity. That's all. You need nothing more than this. Huh? Bless you. The fields that are being used for this entity are defined in a function that is called base field definition of this entity. And we have the standard fields that we defined on this side, and we can add our own fields. Oops, excuse me. In this case, we add a field called name, that is a string that has a label with name, um, a comment, and is here defined as a maximum length of 60, or 80, 60, okay? And you can add fields more and more and more. But for the minimum, that's all there is. With this definition, you define an entity that has all the stuff that needs to define the entity type and one field name. Now, how do you do this? Um, Drupal 8 has introduced a very nifty mechanism that when you install a, a module that has an entity definition like this and the base fields defined, it will create the schema for the database automatically. So when you do install, oops, it will create the, the schema in the database. Very good. So no more handling database, no more schema definition. Just by defining the base fields, it will be created. Um, it also has a little problem. Or how do you say, how did you say core bug? Have you ever wondered where all these 900 major bugs are in Drupal? This is one of them. Um, once you have an entity installed, you cannot uninstall it anymore without having a schema. You know? So before you define an entity, you have to uninstall the module. So when you define the entity, install it, the schema is created. And if you make an error in there and the schema is not created, it's very hard to uninstall it again. So be very careful there. Okay? When you have done this, define the entity, the schema is defined, you can start working with it. You can do all the, step, the, the things necessary for heavy data lifting. Huh? CRUD, I assume everybody knows what it means. You can, once you have defined it, you have this contact um, that can be used to create an entity. If you wonder why this looks like a node definition, is because node is an entity type as well. So in this moment, contact has the same meaning as a node. 
you can, um, how do you say, attach values to a variable in here. You can retrieve the value. And this is in blue because that is only applicable for content entities, not for config entities, because huh? it doesn't make sense. Say again? Sorry, I don't understand. You, with this, you would put the a value of the name property, a name field in the contact entity into a variable called name. You don't need to do the get. Um, content entity fields are based on a field structure. So you can, in your custom entity type, you can add methods. But by default, you can access any field and any property of it using those that syntax. It's actually using PHP magic internally, and it just, yes, it's similar to that, except it's not a wrapper, it's the object. I mean, the metadata wrapper came in with the entity module. It was just because it was too late to be put into core, but now it's been implemented correctly. So with this, you can basically do all the, the CRUD thing, apart from the delete, with this you can manage. Um, you could use, you can use the normal entity query function, which is very powerful. You can see here you have um, conditions in, on a field here. You can sort it and then execute the query and it will give you back an array of IDs that, of the entities that um, have all these conditions as defined here. Okay. You can load them, one at a time, or multiple. So what you really can do, what you do normally as well with nodes, is you take this um, ID array, put it into a load multiple, and it loads you an array of all the entities, entity data, builds the instances, and you have them at your disposal in programming. The last thing to do, you can delete entities by this. Now, with what you have seen here, we could actually stop here and say that's entities in, in Drupal 8. Because for data lifting, if you have a lot of data to manipulate, load, define, load, manipulate, resave, export, import, whatever, you have the mechanisms in place. That's probably the most efficient way of manipulating um, set formats of data and masses of data. But there's much more to it, and Sasha will tell you about that. Um, yeah, so if you delete an entity, then it deletes it from the database, yes. He says if you, if you create an entity and do not save it, can you then still delete it? Or it, will it check whether it exists on the database? No, you can't delete it because delete is only about the database. And if it have not saved, there's no ID, so you can't delete anything. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yes, that was about the entity itself. And there's a lot of functionality of features around entities that you can use in your entity type to make forms, user interfaces, lists, and so on. And I'm going to talk about a few of those. Um, so first you have handlers, which is what you, if you've worked with entities in Drupal 7, what you know as controllers. It was renamed in Drupal 8 to avoid confusion with the Symfony controllers from routing. And there are links and routing then those two concepts are the same for config and content entities, basically. And three other concepts that I'm talking about, about more information about the field definitions, um, views integration, and the field UI, um, those are only available for content entities. Um, you've seen some quick, minimal examples of defining those fields, of those base fields before. This is a bit more um, involved, has a few more methods. And basically, that's what you do to define the basic structure um, of your entity. There are a few more methods you can define, like you see here, default values. You can make it required or not. And then there are additional methods that allow you to, for example, set up a default widget. So if you, as you know, from Drupal 7, 
um, configurable fields can have widgets and can have formats. So you can edit them and you can view them. Um, those two concepts are available for base fields as well in Drupal 8. So you can also, the node title in the node form is also a normal um, field widget. So you can provide also the widget configuration for your base field. So if you have a form then, as we will see later on, that will automatically be available as a form field for you. So you can create an entity, your entity in the user interface. And exactly the same way, there are settings available for formatters, so you can also view them. And what's useful to know is that there are two as an additional method. It's about, um, you can decide if the user is able to see and change your configuration. So maybe, for example, it doesn't make sense that the user might change the configuration for the name field because you want it to be exactly like this. Then you don't make it configurable. And if you make it configurable, then it shows up in the managed form and managed display user interfaces, just like any configurable field. And handlers, as I mentioned before, that was what it's called in controllers in Drupal 7. Um, it's basically a generic concept of attaching additional functionality to an entity type. And usually the advantage is that you can override um, how things work. So for example, if you have special um, logic that applies to viewing an entity type, you can, instead of using the default logic, you can specify your own so-called view builder, which is the first one that we're looking at. And that allows you to um, customize how your entity looks if it's displayed. And many of those um, handlers are sort of also related to routing. So for example, actually view an entity, you also need a route for it. And if you specify in your route, maybe you've seen routing in Drupal 8 before, usually you have, there, you have form or you have controller. And in this case, you have entity view, and then Drupal basically automatically connects that route with the view builder of your entity type. So you don't need anything else, you just need that route and the view builder in your class which can be the default view builder, and then you can view your entity based on the field configuration that you made before. Um, then there's the list builder. The list builder basically displays a table that contains a list of your entities, and it allows you to edit them, delete them, and possibly filter and sort them. Um, list builders are usually only used for config entities, because for content entities, you most of the time use views integration because the default simple list builder isn't going to be enough. You might want different lists and filters and other configurable logic to decide what and when to show your entities. So that's mostly for config entities. And then you have different forms. You can have as many of those form keys as you want. So you can have like forms to edit your entity type. You can have confirmation forms to give that ask if you really want to delete it or enable or disable or whatever you want to make up. It just has to match um, the key that's in the routing. So you can see that additionally to entity view that I mentioned before, there is entity list for the list and there's entity form for an entity form. And the, we can see that there's add and there's also add in the route. And that basically connects that route with the add Four modes. So you can have an edit one, you can have a route for deleting, and so on. Um, you probably want to control who can edit and delete and view your entities. So by default, there is a default access control handler that basically denies everything. So as a security measure, by default, nothing, nobody is allowed to view or edit your entities. Um, there is a very simple way to specify it, that's called admin permission. And that's usually used for config entities. So if you have a single permission in the module and you say, if a user has that permission, then you can do anything with my entities. Then you can just specify admin permission and give it that permission. And then the user can do anything. And if you need more, then you can provide a custom um, access control handler. And for example, they say that an entity can't be deleted when it's still used or have separate permissions for the separate actions and so on. 
and about links and routing, the next topic. Um, in your entity type, you can specify links. And that's basically a pass for the different actions that are combined also with the routing and with those form modes and so on. So um, as we've heard before, blue is content entity specific. That in this case doesn't mean that um, you can't be... It's, so the canonical link basically is the view operation, viewing an entity. And it's blue because it's not technically impossible to view a config entity. It just doesn't make sense because most of the time your config entities are just configuration. You don't view them, they're just used by something else. And you have, can have those links for edit form, for delete form, for collection, that's basically the list. You can, there are a few standard names that have automatically do something and you can also make up your own if you have your own links. For example, if you show locks for each entity that you have, then you can just make up a lock link and that works as well. Um, uh, what's a very recent addition that only got in, I think, shortly before 8.0 is that um, you, there is a helper to create the necessary routing for this. So up until very recently, you had to additionally add the routing file and you had to specify all those routes in there for viewing and editing and deleting and so on and so on. And now you can specify that, um, what's it called again? The default HTML route provider. And based on the links you have, if you follow those naming conventions, it will basically automatically generate that routing definition for you. Um, so if you just want the standard logic and don't have anything special there, you can just add that line to your handle list and it will generate the routing file for you and you don't have to do it yourself. And as I said before, some of those keys has, have special naming. For example, if you have those keys and if you have a list builder, then you will automatically get operation links in your views and in your lists that allow to edit and delete your entities. Um, very quickly, um, there is a flag called end field UI, field UI base route. And basically it tells Drupal where the management of your entity type is so that it can attach the manage fields, manage display and manage form um, user interfaces. So all you need to do is specify that line and then you can add your own configurable fields to your own entity type. Um, that doesn't always make sense. So um, the question always is, do you want to use Node? Do you want to use your own entity type? And I think it can often make sense to use your own entity type because um, Node adds a lot of overhead. For example, nodes are always by default translatable and have revisions. And if you just need data and don't need that to be revisionable and don't need it to be translatable, then it's a lot more efficient, efficient to make your own type you can also specify all the fields you want in, as your base field definitions, and then everything is stored in a single table. And if you use configurable fields, for example, if you um, use a node type and create 20 configurable fields on it, then Drupal will create around 40 tables to manage that data. And you can have that in one table if you use your own entity type. Okay, so I think that's my last slide. And... Views integration is very simple. It's just another handler. So um, what that does is just that it generates the so-called views data for views, which is the data structure that views needs to allow a user to create a view of your entity type. So it will give him filters and fields and sort options. And the basic works out of the box for most field types and most fields. And you can always specify override, use the default class, or you can specify your own, call the parent method, and then add more fields, add different filters, and so on, whatever you need. But there's, for all the basic stuff that you had to write hundreds of lines of code or definitions in Drupal 7, you can just specify that line, and you will get the default views integration out of the box. Good. So... You have seen all the elements. Once you create an entity on your own with all the stuff, these are all the files you need. Right? Um, it's, it's, 
it's not magic. It's not overly complex, but it needs a lot of stuff. So it's really not trivial. It is uh, very powerful, and there's lots more to it. You can do bundles with it. You can do revisions. You can create config entities to import and export your settings and configurations, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot to learn about, a lot to um, understand about it. Um, the examples module on this, I wrote by hand over time and adapting to Drupal 8, etc. It was a lot of work. But in the meantime, um, I found out that uh, there is something called Drupal Console. Who of you knows Drupal Console? Okay, most of it. Good. I'll give a quick little demo afterwards. Because with these two lines of code, I can create a new module and create all the files necessary for um, entity. this works. Okay. Here I have um, Okay, here we go. So, I do Drupal generate module module No, that's wrong. Okay. Let's call it Vienna. Say again. You cannot read it. That's bad, huh? Can I make it large? I cannot make it large. Is it larger now? Okay. Can you read it now? No. Okay, believe me. I just type... Um, uh, possibly could. See anything? Yeah. Um, the resolution is. You're really testing me, huh? <laughs> if I go to. <laughs> I don't know if this works or not. <coughs> Better? Oh, cool. Can you read it now? Yeah. Very good. Okay. So I just do, um, I do generate Drupal module. It's called Vienna. I take the parameters, everything. That's okay. No feature. Okay. So the module is now created. So next step is Drupal generate uh, entity content. I have to tell it to which module to add it. And then I just do default entries, da 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 da. Doesn't matter. So, and now all the files you've seen in the summary have been created in the meantime. So, if you go onto my installation, I have uh, an installation here. This is my site. Oops, la. Oops, la. I probably have a. a no. It's already installed. Now, that was a mistake, sorry. Okay, let's see if this works or not. If you go into configuration, um, no structure, Vienna settings, no. Okay, I had the module installed already. So what I want to tell you is with this, you can activate it, install it, the database table will be created, all the files are there, you can start working, adding your fields, doing whatever you want with it. So it's not that you have to learn on how to create each of individual files. Um, the tools are there. Let me get back to the presentation quickly. Okay. Other tools. ID is very clear with Drupal 8. Um, there is the example module that you can download for developers. That's where all the code on these slides came today. There is uh, the content entity documentation in, on Drupal.org. It's basically that code from the example explained. There is an entity cheat sheet, very nifty, very useful. It's small. It's because there's a lot of stuff on it, um, which gives you all the uh, properties, commands, functions, etc., that you need on uh, for creating entities in Drupal. 
So there is a lot of documentation. So again, the gentleman with the red shirt is excused, but all of you can really, if you want and you need to, learn about this. And it's a very powerful tool. Okay. Questions? It actually has a chord, you know? There's no specific reason. It's actually possible for a config to depend on content. That works as sort of a soft dependency. Um, the reason is simple is that core doesn't need it. The core doesn't allow you to, core needs dependencies to install those configura that configuration in the correct order and make sure that you can't import something that needs something else that you don't have. And it doesn't have that functionality for content, so it doesn't um, need it. But if you use the default content module, for example, that Lee Rollins is working on, it's building that those dependencies based on the links and it's figuring out based on those references in which order content has to be created. So it builds its own dependency system for content entities. Okay. Would it be possible to add something like this to Drupal 8 if now the final release has been made? Because I know there's been this bug in core, and we've been working on it in Copenhagen already, that you can potentially delete a node type That would be a use case, yes. Um, that's now prevented, but it's a custom one, more or less one-off solution, just for node types, just for nodes. So yes, it would definitely be possible to have some gen more generic system um, that allows you to do this. It would need to be more efficient than it, the way it's done for config entities because that's basically read all into memory, and then it's built on in memory, that dependency tree and dependencies. That won't work if you have one million nodes. Um, unfortunately, there is not. And that's the template and preprocess is one part that hasn't been unified in Drupal 8. So you still need your template. It, only, it works. You can have your rebuilder and view it. But Drupal will, I think, by default, lock an error that there is no template because it just assumes there is a template with the name of your entity type. And it will lock an error if that doesn't exist. It will still display it because it will display all the fields inside but you still need to provide a template that doesn't exist at the moment. But it's something that you maybe could add in 8.1 or so, or in the entity module. So maybe one important feature there, uh, we started working on entity module for Drupal 8, and it's basically a container for stuff you want to get in Drupal core that didn't make it in, like for example, improved revision handling. So it could be a feature for the entity module like we could add it there, we could test it there, people could use it, and then we can bring it into 8.1 or 8.2. In the default storage, yes, that's exactly what happens. It's possible to write a different storage. I think there was one, there were some in Drupal 7, but they were never really um, production ready. It would be possible to write one. I don't think there's any movement or activity in Drupal core to provide this, but if someone wants to work on it, that might be useful, yes. Yes. 
Twitter? One, one less, one more? Ah, okay. Yeah, we'll put, put those slides up. I don't know what the mechanism is, on, but we'll put them up. So. Base fields to define for entity to have their own table. As soon as they get fieldable, they'll use the standard mechanism oh. for saving tables. Yeah, so you kind of post exactly your base fields are in one table or in one to four tables, depending on if you have translatable or revisionable entity type. And then you can also have additional configurable fields which are in their own table. Yes. Um, yes, that works for all fields because there is practically no difference anymore between a configurable field and a base field. The node ID and the node title and the node body, they all work in exactly the same way. The only difference is how they're stored, but anything else is pretty much the same. It is possible, yes. You basically um, have to create your config any type, probably. Don't have to, but that's the default way. For example, node type for nodes and vocabulary for terms. And then you have to connect the two. You have to basically say on the content entity that the, this, the other config entity provides bundles for it. And you have to say in the bundle, on the config entity type, that it's the bundle for that other one. So the property on each entity type and then they're connected, and Drupal will more or less do the rest for you. Why would you say um, it's better to use the custom entities than the content types? Sorry, I didn't. But, um, when would you um, say, OK, better create a custom entity, a uh, custom um, entity type than using a default content type, for example? Um, that's a good question. Um, as I said before, node based by default, unless you change it, which is not that easy is translatable and revisionable. So it creates already four tables just for the base fields. And if you know that you will never need translations, that you will never need revisions, and you have a specific hard-coded set of those fields, then you can have the storage in one table. So that's a lot more efficient to do. But So it's, I think it's useful, for example, for the custom data storage, for custom modules. And I don't think it's that useful for custom entity types to, have, um, to be fieldable, maybe, but I don't think you really need bundles that often. You just make a second content type. On content type, no type. Maybe it could be useful if you need more hierarchy nodes. Like if you have a content type, you cannot have a sub-content type. That means that you can create custom entity types, and then you can have bundles. Like you can have a car, a car entity type, and then a truck, and something. Um, could be, yes. Another reason for specifying your custom entity types would be that um, with node types, there's a whole UI setup that has all kinds of features for revisions and translations. If you don't need those um, for your bundle, you'd have to strip all that out again. Uh, plus, some access control um, could be a little limited, at least it used to be in Drupal 7. If you have your custom entity type, you build everything up from scratch. Besides having the, the performance improvements in the database, you also have the UI that is simpler. And you don't have all these things there that you would otherwise have to strip out. But it would save work, essentially. Okay. So if you ever thought that the node system sucks, you can now build your own. <laughs> and uh, please don't forget the beers for Sasha, and have a good evening. Thank you very much.